Well, hello and a very big welcome to Third and Long. My God, what a week in the NFL. And don't we get to provide you a 360 degree access all areas, everything in the NFL with an Aussie twist. And Third and Long is brought to you by Little Birdie TV and topsport.com.au. And boys, well, a big welcome. The conference playoffs, what a week. Arguably, we'll go down as the greatest of all time, but we'll get the the two gentlemen I'm going to welcome in, Marco, where do we start? Well, for only four matches, Corey, it was an unbelievable week, as you said. We've got a lot to unpack. Um, you know, four four finishes uh, to the death. First three by the kickers and then OT in the last game. Uh, great viewing and each game kind of got better as the week went on. So uh, for NFL fans, it just doesn't get any better than the week we just experienced. I know we've got... Uh, Two into one to go, but uh, yeah, that was that, that was a highlight for the season so far. Unbelievable finishes. And our man in Miami, well, isn't he lucky? He's off to LA to watch the 49ers and the Rams. Jerry, have you in your lifetime watching the NFL? Where I know we're going to cover this off, but I'd be interested straight off the top. Have you ever seen a maybe a better weekend of NFL? No, I was going to say you could remove the arguably. It was the best week. I mean, there's no... You know, the smallest margin of victory for the four games combined. And you like every single one came down to the last play. So it's it's almost not even arguable. But yeah, it was amazing. Never seen anything like it. And we'll we'll rip straight into it, boys. Look, the the divisional mat, uh, matches completed. As we said, three upsets from a betting perspective, and it was it was nearly four. We'll get right into it. It was, I mean, it seems like an an eternity ago. We had the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the number one ranked. Tennessee Titans, well, they started well. Um, and in the end, it was a, a field goal to McPherson. And didn't he put himself under pressure by just calling it and saying, right, boys, I'm going to take you to the promised land. I'll, I'll go to you first, Jerry. What a performance by Burroughs. Sacked nine times and still managed to throw for 348 yards. Yeah, I mean, that game, again, I gave you the guys the Bengals here. We did like that. I kind of feel a little bit fortunate. Um, Burrow, like you said, got sacked nine times. I mean, Tannehill just handed the game to Cincinnati. Um, he did. you know, his first pass, his last pass were intercepted, and then the one in the red zone. So three interceptions. Uh, it was just too much to overcome. Uh, it was tooth and nail, even with those three picks. So I think if they played again, Tennessee would walk away pretty easily the winner. But what we have is Cincinnati. They deserve to be there and they are there. They are there and they've uh, they managed to do something where winning on the road as well, which they hadn't done in a long, long time. And and Marco, you know, like I said, it was a long, long time, well, long time ago, it seems like now. But uh, where, how did you see that game, the first one of the of a wild weekend? Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, it was probably a sl- the slow start to the weekend. I mean, it, the game wasn't uh, didn't have too many highlights and it was a low scoring game. It was only the fact that I think it was close. Uh, and, and I agree with Jerry. I, di- I just think it was... Tennessee on their home deck with a week off is certainly one they'll uh, have a long off season thinking about because you know they cost themselves. I don't think since he played great, as you said, they, you know, he, I mean, the quarterback got sacked nine times and you win a game. Not sure how often that happens in any NFL game, let alone a playoff. Um, yeah, to escape the win, since he, they've done it a couple of times in a row now, and now, now they've got to go to uh, play the Chiefs next week. But um, yeah, I think I think Tennessee will definitely rue lost opportunity in this one. And look, you don't care how you win, but uh, top rope. What were your thoughts in this uh, encounter, first encounter of a wild weekend? Yeah, look, it kicked off a, a, a great weekend. Uh, yeah, I thought uh, the, the the big takeaways there was uh, never back Ryan Tannehill in a playoff game ever, uh, and uh, the Bengals won in spite of an O line that uh, gave up a record number of sacks on Joe Burrow. I, think I said plenty about Burrow. Plenty about the Bengals as a team. I thought it was a, a real gutsy winner. And Money McPherson, the kicker, is uh, looks like he might be the new Justin Tucker. He's uh, he came on, said we're going to the uh, conference championship, and so it was. So big, big uh, win by the Bengals there. And in the second one, well, how do we see this one, boys? We would never have thought in our wildest dreams that someone would be able to go into Green Bay. 
take on Aaron Rodgers and do what happened. But my God, I tell you what, Robbie Gold, I don't know whether you, either of you gentlemen have seen it, even the practice that he was doing pre-game and we've actually seen him, which I thought, boys, he performed much better when he was kicking under pressure when he kicked between the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Now that is pressure. But look, Jerry, I'll throw to you first. Is it a case now how are we start, starting to see Aaron Rodgers' legacy at Green Bay? Because Brett Favre that came before him, that extra Super Bowl just elevates him a little bit higher. What's the fallout this week been in the United States? Yeah, I mean, again, nobody knows. Nobody can get into Aaron Rodgers' head, but I'm a betting man, and I'm going to bet he's done in Green Bay. Uh, all the drama in last year's offseason – Really, he last year they the the Packers held the cards. That little holdout and the little concessions that they made to get him in there last year. Well, it's completely flipped now. Now Rodgers holds all the cards. So there was a lot of things that he couldn't do last year that he can this year. I say he's done. I see uh, the Broncos signed uh, the the Packers OC. Everyone seems to think that's a fit. You know, with a couple of good receivers over there. I'm I'm not quite sold on that yet. But he's done in Green Bay. Uh, I just don't know where he's going to go. And if I was a betting man, I would bet on that. And Marco, that the game really had that little bit of a feel. The longer it went on, and the longer that, um, you know, I mean, Green Bay wasn't able to score. It did seem that this result was going to be likely in the end, didn't it? It just seemed like the way that things were going that it was going to be a real low dower game. And unfortunately, if you're a Packers fan, it was the wrong result. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like the first game, Tennessee ruining their opportunities, Green Bay, uh, you know, they'd be even more disappointed. I think, uh, again, week off, number one seed on their home deck. They had everything going for them. They had the cold weather. They scored the first touchdown and did it pretty easily. Um, and then, you know, their defense keeps San Francisco scoreless for the to half time uh, and only three points to three-quarter time. And, and Green Bay haven't put the game away. It's just, you know... Another game that uh, you know their fans and the players will will rue for the off season uh, to let the 49ers, as you said, just hang around, hang around, and 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 get out of there with the win. So disappointing for Green Bay. They had a lot going for them this year, and yeah, as Jerry said, it might be uh, you know it's a pretty poor swan song for Rogers if he does not play again for Green Bay. And of course, the man will get his thoughts and his beloved San Francisco 49ers. There, <laughs> will they move on to another week? Top rope. How did you see your beloved 49ers and what they were able to do in Green Bay? Well, they can talk about Brady. They can talk about Rogers. They can talk about the homes all they like. Jimmy G gets it done. Uh, no, in all seriousness, it's uh, uh, an ugly, ugly win. And you, you, you'd almost certainly call that more a Packers loss than a Niners win. I thought they were. Uh, they were gutsy, the Niners, and hanging in there, but they were outplayed most of the game. Yeah, severe question marks asked about Aaron Rodgers and his failure to to really kind of pull off the big play or two. Because that's all they needed. If they jumped to a 14 nothing lead, yeah, there's no way the Niners were pulling that in. And, and, and they pretty much won it on special teams. So uh, really gutsy win by the 49ers. But, uh, you know, plenty of questions left at the Packers. They, they, they almost certainly left a conference championship game on the table there. Well, it leads us on now to a, what I would call in Australia, Jerry, for us. And it was Sunday in America, but it was a magical Monday here in Australia. We kicked it off first with the LA Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and a kicker, in, like in all the games, they managed to seal the game. Um, just an amazing, amazing game. I must admit, when I was sitting there, when I saw the result was 27-3, to 3, Hate to bring it up, Atlanta Falcons fans, but I was thinking of the 28-3 comeback in the Super Bowl. But, Jerry, we all know not to write off Tom Brady, but I'll tell you what, I've been really big on him all season, but Matt Stafford, with 42 seconds left, to, he put on the Superman outfit and he said, jump on my back, boys, because I'm going to lead you home. Just an amazing game, wasn't it? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I was not surprised. That was my... Lock of the week, whatever you want to call it. I was really big. One of my big, biggest bets on the Rams. So I was not actually surprised with the 27-3. I was surprised with the comeback. And full disclosure here, guys, I was really big on the Rams. Uh, at I don't remember exactly what the score was. I think they were down 21 after the cup fumble. I took a flyer on Tampa plus 950 uh, because, like, you just, you just alluded to the 28-3 Falcons game. I felt something strange 
Uh, it was looking like Brady Maggot, you know, obviously just, you know, when you're taking 950, almost 10 to 1, you could put a peanut on it. And I just covered up some of my bet. And it wound up being the right thing to do because that game should have went overtime. I don't know how they left Cup wide open like that. Um, and I just had nightmares of Brady winning the toss and the Rams never getting the ball. Where have we seen that before? We saw it against Mahomes in 2018. We saw it against the Falcons in the Super Bowl. And I didn't want to uh, have a big bet coming to a coin toss. So I put myself in a good position. I never actually thought they would come back, but I, I took a flyer and it wound up being the right move. And uh, thankfully, my Rams' biggest play of the playoffs held on. And, uh, you know, they did what I thought they were going to do. They made Brady look old. They made him look like a 40-year-old quarterback. Uh, the offensive line was banged up without Werfs. They're, you know, they they just were missing too many parts, too many receivers, too many linemen, too many banged up. And it might be the end of Brady, but we'll see. Jerry, do you, re- do you think that everyone seems to get a bit rattled by the reputation and rightfully so of being Tom Brady because I think even uh, the Rams, I think at one stage uh, out of seven plays, once they went up by that margin, I think they called six run plays out of seven. It's it's like they sort of deserted what got them there in the first place. So is it a bit of, I mean, it goes without saying that everyone gets a, a bit worried about the reputation that's Tom, Tom Brady? Yeah, and again, that's why I made that bet. Like Tom Brady yeah. is bigger than life and the Rams were doing everything. I, I could use expressions that are probably not fit for TV, but they did everything possible to blow that game. Like you said, McVay got super conservative and even by being conservative, it's not like they went three and out punt, three and out punt. They were turning the ball over acres fumbles on the one right before the half cup fumbles on first down without even being touched. And then the, the snap over Stafford's head, and also, like, what was the the Acres fumble when they're in kill the clock mode? I mean, the game is over. He it would have been third and one if he just goes down there. It's amazing. It's like a, a Hollywood script, and Stafford and Cup just overturned that script at the buzzer. Marco, how did you uh, see what what I'd call a magical Monday here in Australia, Sunday in America, of course, but. How did, did you uh, have a few shekels on this game? Where did you sit? Yeah, I was happy. I was happy to follow in uh, Jerry. He's, he's, he's got off to a good start with us, been following him a few times this year. The, you know, the Rams, they had a did shot to pieces. Unfortunately, I didn't follow, uh, miss the text from Jerry during the game to say maybe uh, chop out on the Tom Brady. I did get your text to say this does remind me of the Atlanta game. I, I, I just think it was more on the coaches. Uh, the players, sure, they made some mistakes, but I don't understand when the Rams are dominating, they got the score on the board. They just went into shutdown mode too early, and I think the coaches and the play calling made the players more nervous and and more conservative than they need to be. I just think everything was working for them. Tampa Bay couldn't keep up with them. They should have just gone of a line strong. I don't like sides that go too defensive or change their game styles too early, and, and, and they almost invite this situation in. The last person you want to invite in is Tom Brady. He got a sniff really late and, and, and almost pulled off the amazing comeback. But at the end of the day, Stafford... Did a job, uh, you know, that he's brought in to do. And what what an effort. The last drive cannot be underestimated. 42 seconds. I think he put him down 60-plus yards to uh, put him into field goal range. He got the job done. So, yeah, if it went to OT, I think it might have been a different result. And Top Rope, you finally managed to catch your breath after your beloved San Francisco 49ers got the got the job done. How did you see this one? Yeah, uh, unbelievable uh, finish. And Brady almost pulled off another Brady comeback. Uh the Rams did everything they could to throw that one away in the second half. They were absolutely marching to victory. Shut up shop, fumbled the ball away. It was uh, Tampa Bay probably a little bit stiff in the end there, but uh, uh, you know Stafford stepped up in the end. It was a big moment for him, biggest moment of his career. That deep pass to Cooper Cup there that set up the winning field goal. Uh, Might have been an upset uh, with the bookies, but you look at the little birdie tips. Uh, you fellas were all over the Rams, so well done. And, boys, on to the final game. And, wow, what a game for the ages. It was just one – it will go down as one of the greatest games, if not the greatest game of all time. Two of the best teams in the NFL. You know, I mean, they were tied 14-14 at halftime, tied 36 all. Just an amazing, amazing game. And, Jerry, that last minute and 54 seconds, four lead changes, just an, an unbelievable last two minutes, wasn't it? Again, you know, I don't want to toot my horn again. 
But even your you could be right by passing a game. If you remember what I said, I said this is like should be the Super Bowl. The two best teams out there. I can't pick a side. I said I couldn't do it. And I don't care who you had. If you had Buffalo or you had Kansas City, neither side can you take credit for a win or a loss there. Because that game, like you said, in the minor, last minute 54, each team should have won the game twice. So whoever won, again, was the winner of the coin toss. I did lean to the over, which uh, in the end was, you know, almost 80 points. But that had, you know, with two minutes ago, it didn't look like it was going to happen. But it was the game of the week when who could have thought that when we had three game-winning kicks by the road team to win the game and for them to live up to that and not only equal what happened before them, but to take over what happened before them. And I got news for you. Allen and Mahomes looks like it'll be the AFC championship game for years to come. Uh, when this season is over, I'm, I'm curious to see the odds. I'm really going to be betting Buffalo to win next year's Super Bowl. I think uh, they've learned a lot. That front four was getting after KC. KC looked like they were done, um, but they survived. And again, I passed it. You can't take credit for either side if you won that game. And Marco, just on the back of what Jerry's spoken about, I'm usually not too big on stats, but it was the first playoff game in NFL history with three go-ahead touchdowns in the final two minutes. It was also the first game in the Super Bowl area in which both quarterbacks had 300 pass yards, three pa uh, touchdown passes, no intercept uh, interceptions, and 60 rush yards. How are those for stats? Yeah, you're starting to grow on the stats, Corey. I think doing this show, um, you know, you start to realize how important some stats are. Amazing game. Like, you know, what, what you guys have said, you can't add too much to it. It was like both quarterbacks at the top of their game. They're, they're surrounded by talent. Uh, you know, yes, it could have been the Super Bowl. It's just not matched up to be that way. And yes, as Jerry said, it will will be uh, the playoff end for, for many years to come if these teams, uh, you know, keep their quarterbacks and a lot of their team in place. But yeah, amazing that the betting in the run would have is as wild as you've ever seen in the last two minutes. Um, you know, if you watch charts of, you know, if you want to see some movement, look up at the Betfair charts of in the run and stuff like that. But yeah, it was just, you know, unbelievable to watch and and probably the game didn't deserve to have a loser in the end. I don't, you know, Buffalo walk away from that game and, you know, the stats down the line, you know, Davis, the wide receiver and and also Allen at quarterback, they, you know, they just couldn't have done any more. And, and to walk away, put 36 points up in in Kansas and and not get the victory. Um, again, this will bite on it, you know, for a, an offseason where Buffalo keep coming up empty when they look like they've got the cattle to get the job done. And speaking of stats and betting in all sorts of games, Top Rope, how did you see this final game, which was undoubtedly will go down as one of the great games of all time? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that loser was the Buffalo Bills, who I was all over. Also very upset that I had Gabriel Davis, last touchdown scorer. I only scored four of them. Had the last touchdown, I think, twice in the last uh, two minutes and uh, still failed to get it. So uh, astonishing game. Uh, this is That game is the, the future of football, you know, running quarterbacks, the ability to kind of move the ball quickly, throw it deep, you know, score quickly. We saw everything in that game, everything you could possibly want. Yeah, you know, however many lead changes in the last two minutes, Mahomes, yeah, you know, two big plays, 13 seconds. They had to be a winner, they had to be a loser, but it was just one of the great games. And at the end of the day, the, the toss of a coin probably decided who uh, advances to the conference championship and who went home. And onto the market movies that was a very wild week uh, as we covered in the game review. Marco, we only had a couple of games, but how did that all go? Yeah, not too much movement this week, Corey. With the uh, the playoffs, they seemed that the market seemed to get pretty rock solid. And not too much movement. So just a couple on the totals to take note of. They actually both missed. So in terms of uh, the punters picking a side, they missed on both the totals. The Tennessee total went up from forty seven to forty eight and a half. Uh, that low ball there, and then they went the other way in the Chiefs game. It went down from fifty five to fifty four. And as Jerry spoke about before, even though it looked tight going into the last couple of minutes, this end up. 24 points in the last uh, two or minute 54, so it actually sailed over. So two misses in terms of market move, but, yeah, not much to report this week. Well, that was our review of what was an amazing weekend of football, but up next we will cover off everything about Championship Weekend into the house.
Welcome back, and it is time now for To The House, brought to you by topsport.com.au, which is family-owned and operated for 35 years. Bet with a bookie you can trust. Bet with topsport.com.au. Marco, take it to the house. Thanks, Corey. As we just have a quick look at the bookie wrap, we've only got four games to cover, so the stats won't change too much for the season. As you can see them on the screen uh, for this week, the favourites, only one out of the four won and one out of the four covered. Uh, two out of the four totals and only one home team won for the week. As a bring back in top rope, he uh, his tips went two and one for wild card week. Um, he was, as we said, a bit unlucky with Buffalo at the end. He had a couple of lead chain, a couple of leads in the last couple of minutes, couldn't get the job done against KC. He stands at 49-49 on the season top rope. You just want to run us through your three selections for the week there for to the house. Yeah, Bengals were uh, were, were very good there against. Uh, Titans, so they certainly uh, I wouldn't say it was there was a lack of concern there, but probably helped a little bit in the end by the uh, Titans going for um, going for two early in the first half on the back of a penalty. Uh, the over was, as you well know, MG, one of the worst sweats of all time in a Bucks Rams game. There were fumbles at the one, there were intercepts deep. It was utterly horrific, but uh, Brady had a comeback there that kind of made that that go over the total with. Uh, a few minutes remaining. Uh, and the Buffalo game, well, what can be said? We were just on the wrong side of one of the great games there. So, uh, a bit unlucky, but there we are. All right, thanks there. Top rope, almost a shutout uh, weekend there, going almost 3-0. and uh, He is 49-49 on the season. He's got three matches left for the year, so hopefully he can uh, get his nose in front on the count there. As we move to uh, the conference uh, week, we've got only two matches to cover, so we'll uh, cover with a bit of uh, depth in these two matches. The first match we'll look into here is Cincinnati and the Chiefs. Uh, we've got Cincinnati traveling to the Chiefs, and this will be shown early Monday morning at 7 a.m. on ESPN. The line here, the Chiefs are favorites at minus seven, a touchdown to the home side here, and the total is 54. It actually opened 55 here, top rope, down a peg to 54. We've got um, the 12 win. Cincinnati team play, taking on the 14-win Chiefs. Uh, both teams are in unbelievable form coming in. The Bengals have won uh, five of their last six. They travel to KC, who have won an astonishing 11 out of 12 now and eight straight at home. Uh, noting their top rope that the only loss KC have had in that 12-game stretch was an away loss to this team, Cincinnati, by three points, and that was in Week 17. It was the uh, high-scoring game, 34-31. to 31. How do you see this week's match panning out? Yeah, don't love it from a betting point of view. I think it's a fascinating matchup. Uh, trying to break this game down, I, I kind of can't with KC minus seven uh, as the, the line here, so not a lot of action on that side of it. Probably if I was yeah, gun to the head, I'd be leaning towards betting on the Chiefs here just because I think it'll all be gone. But uh, I think the worry for the Bengals will be their inability to stop the pass rush. Uh, and we've seen that Frank Clark and, and the Chiefs can can certainly create pressure on the quarterback. So that's uh, got to be a big concern for for the Bengals after they gave up nine sacks last week. Uh, again, not in love with that one. What I do love, uh, well, well, like a lot, is the over in this one. I think this will be a shootout. The last three have tallied fifty five plus. I don't, you know, the line's high enough to make it not a sensational bit, but. The only way these two teams are moving the ball is through the air. Uh, Kansas City, 27th ranked pass defense. Cincinnati, 26th ranked pass defense against two of the top seven passing offenses in the league. So uh, the Bengals, they rank fifth in their rushing defense. I think this is going to be a shootout through the air. You know, I, I do think there's going to be points. Like you said last time, MG, there's 55 in these met last met last time. So sorry, 65 in these guys met last time. So I'm... I, I, I think there's going to be points in this one. The yeah, over is six and two, and the Bengals are off a win. Ten seven straight Kansas City games. I'll, I'll be backing the over. Okay, thanks there. Top rope. Top rope likes uh, KC at the minus seven. There, Jerry. What do you thought? What are your thoughts on this game, Cincinnati v the Chiefs? Yeah, uh, I like Kansas City a lot. Um, I don't like to give out money lines too much, especially when they're a huge money line. I don't see any way KC loses this. Uh, I'm not going to lay the three fifty. So I'm just going to lay the seven. Um, they met about a month ago. KC did, I'm sorry, since he did win that game, if you remember, 
Jamar Chase went absolutely berserk. I think he had like 250 yards receiving. They couldn't cover him. They couldn't figure out anything to stop him. But that was a different situation that was in Cincinnati. It was not the playoffs. Burrow getting sacked nine times last week. Their offensive line was a turnstile. I think the Chiefs have learned more, and the Chiefs have the playoff experience. Look for the Chiefs to go on in a big way. I don't even seeing it. I don't see it close, Mark. Uh, lay the seven, and that is my best bet of the week. I know we're going to come back to it, but there's only two games, so I, did, I spoiled it for you. That's uh, okay. Spoiler alert. Okay, Corey, our two uh, judges before you, very keen on Kansas minus seven at the line. Uh, can you throw any light on the Bengals? Not really, even though, look, you'd, you'd like to imagine Cincinnati are going to offer a bit more protection for Joe Burrow, um, who, by the way, he's six zip in the postseason dating back to back to college. So he obviously loves the big stage, but I just can't see. Look, I, I think from last time when Kansas City actually played against Cincinnati, they had a number of missed tackles and penalties, and I reckon they'll get their house in order. And just for mine, I did pick them at the start of the season, Marco, on the Kansas City Chiefs, so we'll get that in there. But I just think Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey – um, Tyreek Hill, I just think in the big moments when it really counts, they will march on to the Super Bowl. The second match follows straight on at 10.30 a.m. on ESPN. We've got the 49ers tackling the Rams. This is a divisional matchup, believe it or not. We have got this at SoFi Stadium. The home team here, the Rams, are favourites at minus three and a half and a mid-size total here, top rope of 46 flat. We've got uh, the 12-win 49ers taking on the 14-win Rams. Again, both sides uh, in great form. The 49ers had to virtually win out to make the playoffs. They've won nine of their last 10, and the Rams have won seven of their last eight. Um, they've had two matchups this year, top rope. Uh, your 49ers have done the job nicely in both of them. They won by 21 points in week 10, and then they won by three points in uh, week, I think, 17. Are there any chance the 49ers of making a uh, place in the play, in the Super Bowl and beating the Rams? Definitely. Uh, yeah, as a Niners fan, there aren't too many matchups. I've kind of got a pretty good gauge on where the Niners are at in terms of I thought yeah, Green Bay was a big concern. It was Green Bay slurs. I think they match up really, really well with the Rams. And uh, Shanahan just has it over McFly. I think he's won six straight against McFly here. Uh, so... Very, very keen on the, the Niners getting, getting more than a field goal in this game. I think it's a very good bet here. Um, the Doggers covered six straight in this head-to-head -head matchup. The the Niners have covered five of their last six against the winning team, four straight as a dog, four or five on the road. Yeah, you mentioned the Rams have won seven of their last eight. That one loss was to the Niners. It was a big comeback. Uh, the first ever Sean McVay blown lead at half time. So, uh, look, they can be vulnerable. In the secondary, the uh, the Rams, they can be found out there. So if they can stop that pass rush, the Niners, and, yeah, you know, there is something that the, the offensive line can do for, for San Francisco. And they can also just turn this into an absolute dogfight as well up front, as we saw last week, make the game ugly, try and be a factor on special teams, that kind of thing. I, I, I Yeah, I, they're not going to be able to run the ball, the Rams, so it's the seventh-best rushing defence. They're going to have to throw it. Yeah, the Niners are no doubt vulnerable in their secondary, but Stafford's going to start right long enough to be able to do that. So, yeah, I I, I don't mind the Niners hitting the three and a half points. Uh, I do think though, that the best bet in this game is the under. I can see this being another real ugly, ugly style of game. A couple of factors there. It's the only way, real way, the Niners can win this game. Divisional matchups lately tend to go under. Big under spot both teams here. The under is hit in 17 of 21 when the Rams are a home favourite. It's in 27 of 37 when the Rams are favourite full stop. Six of seven when the Niners are a road dog. In seven of the last eight playoff games, oh, I really think this will be uh, a, a real dog fight here, real scrappy, scrappy affair. So I'll, I'll be betting the under and I'll be betting the Niners plus in this one. All right, thanks, Top Rope. Top Rope's really keen on the under there in the um, 49ers game, under 46. Jerry, what are your thoughts? This is the match you're leaving soon to take a flight to go and see live. What do you uh, surmise on the 49ers-Rams game? Yeah, before we get into that, as soon as we're done taping here, I'm heading out to Vegas, flying to Vegas. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to drop some coin on my uh, KC Chiefs. Then I'm going out to LA. I'm going to SoFi, to that beautiful stadium, to go watch this game. 
Believe it or not, I don't have a play on this game, Mark. I can't play every game. Um, it's it's a tough matchup, but since we're here to give out winners, I lean the Rams. Uh, gun to the head, I would play the Rams. I know they're 0-2 against the 49ers this season, and I, I think something like Shanahan's like 6-0 and versus McVay, if I got that right. Uh, but the Rams will they, – they went all in with the o, OBJ, with the Von Miller with the Matt Stafford, they're all in for this season and they're all in to win the Super Bowl and they're not going to let the San Francisco 49ers get in their way. For all the things that could have happened, they could have been playing, you know, any number of teams. You got the first, second, and third seed to fall. You're the four seed and you're playing the seven seed and you're a three and a half point favorite. You got to get there. You really do. And um, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy I'm sure you will. You're, uh, you describe your suite that you're going to, so it sounds like a penthouse hotel that you're going to. I'm looking forward to the footage for our Super Bowl show there. Corey, uh, we've got a bit of a split there. Obviously, Top Rope's not going to go away from his 49ers. Jerry, very keen on the Rams. Uh, you've got the deciding vote here. Which way do you see this game? I'll tell you, Jerry and I are very much aligned in my notes. I'm, I'm tr- starting to think whether I posted my notes because they're very much similar to Jerry. And by the way, very jealous, of Jerry, that he's off to SoFi Stadium, which looks like one of the great stadiums in sport. Look, the 49ers, um, six and zip, last uh, the last one of the last six games against the Rams, so they're a real buggy team. Um, I think the third down conversions have been huge for um, 49ers the last few weeks against Dallas and Green Bay. But that said... Um, I'm very much the same as Jerry. I think they're all in with what they did this season in getting Stafford and OBJ and uh, Von Miller. Um, and look, I, I think they'll get over their bogey match. The one thing they do have to stop is the fumbles. I think as Jerry um, mentioned in the game review, they had four fumbles last week. So I think if they're, especially when you're getting to this pointy end of the season, when there's not really too much difference that's going to separate the teams, they really need to stop that. I think the Rams will be another – I think they'll be the second team uh, that will actually be the host of the Super Bowl and make the Super Bowl, and uh, they will be going on and hosting it in SoFi Stadium. Okay, very good there. So the split result goes to the Rams there from the three judges. I'll just move on now to the Super Bowl betting. Uh, we've only got four teams left, obviously. We've got uh, KC is at $2.20, the Rams at $3.49 ers at $5.50, and Cincy at $9. Top rope, I'll go to you first. You've, uh, you know, you were keen on Green Bay for most of the year, but you've tipped a couple of outsiders late in the year. The 49ers at uh, $41. They're now still alive at $5.50. And last week, the pick you wanted to go with was with Cincinnati at the $16. So they're still alive as well. If you're having one bet for the week, um, what are you doing, and how do you? Which two sides do you think will advance to the Super Bowl? Yeah, I, I uh, I'll be back from the Chiefs at black figures. They will start favourite against whatever NFC team they run up against. So um, I think, and I do think they they're entitled to beat the Bengals this week. The matchup's pretty good for them. So I'll be on uh, on them. At the two twenty, and I think they, I, I think the 49ers are the team that they're going to be taking. I think it'll be the a Chiefs, Chiefs Niners Super Bowl for the second time in three years. So, uh, yeah, I'll be on uh, uh, the Chiefs. I think the value at two twenty, but I think the Niners can advance. And to be honest, uh, yeah, I'm on them at the forty one dollars five fifty. Probably doesn't hold a lot of appeal right now, but I think there's a bit of value there for sure. You know, this is not what I do normally, but you know, for the show, we'll give it out there. Like last week, you know, I told you that since he would beat Tennessee, but my Super Bowl play was on Tennessee. I'm going to do something similar this week. You you just can't back the chalks when it comes down here. You're not getting enough value. Uh, Even though I like the Rams this week, and even though I like KC to win the Super Bowl, those odds, I have to play San Francisco. Um, I think since he has no chance to beat Kansas City, and they won't beat either one of those other teams. So I think if the 49ers pulled an upset with a perfect game against the Rams, they beat them twice already. Even though I'm not betting them this week, if they won that game, they match well with Kansas City. I mean, they they match up well with a a nice front four to put some pressure on Mahomes, a running game that can keep the ball away from him. So, again, this is about the price. It's nothing to do with the team. I don't think they would win, but gun to head at those odds, it's San Fran. 
Okay, thanks, Jerry. Uh, Corey, what would you be placing your bet on this week? Oh, look, I I picked him at the start of the season. I'll go with Kansas City, even though there is some pretty good value in only a four horse race. Exactly like what Jerry said, that there is a bit of value, and and probably the 49ers represent the best value. But look, I I can't go past the team that I picked at the start of the year, which was Kansas City. Yeah, you've stuck fat there. You're the only one alive with a pick. Uh, unfortunately, Buffalo went out for me last week. Each week, our panel of four has been granted $100 to invest, which has been sponsored by topsport.com.au. Topsport is Australia's biggest betting bookie. Bet where the pros get set. Now, all the profits have been donated to my platform called Walk With Me Online, where we're doing great things in the physical and mental fitness space. Now, Marco, how are we looking after last week? Well, other than you, the captain, the leader, uh, you know, you've let yourself down again. But uh, I tell you what, you, you, you're pretty proud of your other three. Three out of four is as good a week as uh, I think we've had. We've had one week of four out of four for the year. So three out of four, very solid, as you can see on the leaderboard. Uh, Corey just missed with uh, his, with a late field goal. And then the other three all got theirs. So the leaderboard now, Corey, you were a strong leader all year, but all of a sudden in the shadows of the post, you're starting to get a little nervous. You can see their page has moved up to 10 and 10 and top rope is only two behind you. So maybe there's a draw in the offering, Corey. But the no, there's you- not, remember, because even after this week, if it's a tie, who's the only one that's live? Yeah, that's going true. Into Super Bowl? Yeah, that's true. We'll give it to you. But the good news <laughs> is that the good news is that we're going well. The total's now clicked over the three and a half, which was I think our preseason budget, what we thought we might get up around. So three thousand five hundred and fifteen, and we've got two weeks worth of tips left. So Hopefully, we can uh, add to that total for Walk With Me Online. Okay, time for the best of the week. Jerry, I'll throw to you. Uh, you're on fire. You've tipped two out of two since joining us for the playoffs. What is your number one pick for this week's games? Oh, Mark, there's no doubt about this. We're going three for three, and it's the Kansas City Chiefs. I already alerted to it with a spoiler alert. Kansas City, minus the seven. Look for them to win by about 20 points, man. I, I just, unless I'm missing something, this is blowout central. Okay, thanks for that, Jerry. Really appreciate your time. You can get on the plane now, get out to uh, Vegas and LA. Really enjoy your trip. Have a safe one and enjoy the game. Okay, thanks for Jerry for joining us there. Corey, we'll throw to you for your uh, best of the week and we want you to uh, get it this week so you can uh, be the undisputed winner. It will be undisputed, Marco, because I'm going San Francisco and the Rams, the under points in that game. I'll have my $100 on that. But top rope, who are you going with to win some money for walk with me? Yeah, I, uh, I'll be back from the Chiefs at Black Figures. They will start favourite against whatever NFC team they run up against. So um, I think, and I do think they, they're they entitled to beat the Bengals this week. The matchup's pretty good for them. So I'll be on uh, on them at the 220. And I think, they, I, I think the 49ers are the team that they're going to be taking. I think it'll be the a Chiefs, Chiefs Niners Super Bowl for the second time in three years. So uh, yeah, I'll be on. Uh, uh, the Chiefs, I think, the value at two twenty, but I think the Niners can advance. And to be honest, uh, yeah, I'm on them at the forty one dollars five fifty. Probably doesn't hold a lot of appeal right now, but I think there's a bit of value there for sure. Can't believe uh, Corey's posted the same as Top Rope this week. He's, I think he's trying to check his run to uh, possibly tie. But anyway, that's what they've ended up with. So we'll go with the strength. Both of them on under forty six. For myself, I'm going to go an over total this week between Cincy and the Chiefs. I just think. Uh, 54 looks low for me. The Chiefs at home have been scoring average 35 points. They've won eight straight, and I just think they'll put a number up on Cincinnati. Paige, on her travel, she sent me in her tip. Surprise, surprise, Paige. is going to stick fat with her 49ers. She's going to ride them all the way, hopefully, to the Super Bowl. And Paige has gone the 49ers, the line plus three and a half. So good luck to all the punters. And if you're following your favorite tipster, good luck in the divisional, uh, the conference playoffs. Well, our first ever Super Bowl party will be Monday, the 14th of February at the Emerson, which has been the home of Super Bowl over the many years, hosting many great parties. Now, all 18 winners have been sent out at RSVP invite next week. So check your Twitter winning account. Marco, is there any opportunity that anyone else can join us? No, Corey, we've... um We've sold out the event, so just with the numbers allocated at the Emerson, uh, we have locked and loaded everyone, so appreciate everyone who's uh, bought tickets and coming along and to all the winners that have participated in our uh, closest to the pin competition all year. So we're locked and loaded for an event, and we're looking forward to it. Hosted by yourself. You've got a few guests, and we're going to entertain them uh, going through the Super Bowl. So 
That's it. And uh, the only way you can follow it is on our social media pages. Now, that's a wrap for this week. Thanks to the third and long crew. Thanks to Borco. Thanks to Top Rope, Jerry and Marco. No, there will be no Super, oh, no, Super Bowl. There will be no third and long show next week because obviously they have the week off before they do the Super Bowl. So we'll be back for the last show of the season that will preview the biggest game in American sport. Now, you can follow us on YouTube. Find us at the Apple Store, Spotify or SoundCloud or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Follow us at Little Birdie TV at Thurn Long TV on Twitter and Instagram. And remember, for all your action, NFL action can be found at topsport.com.au and invest wisely, punters. Now, enjoy Championship Weekend. Mm-hmm.